Hi, welcome to Bookie. To unlock more world-class bestseller, please download our app. Just search for B-O-O-K-E-Y at Apple Store or Google Play. You will get 7 days free trail with more features. Today we'll unlock ways of seeing. Imagine the following situation which we may run into in our lives. You are attending a high-end event and you feel eager to make connections and impress certain important individuals. During the event, Someone mentions a popular art exhibition that was recently held. When asked your opinion on it, however, you fail to say anything compelling, and feel extremely embarrassed by your ignorance. Instead, someone else speaks confidently about art and gets the spotlight. Now playing a low-key role, you sit on the sidelines as if you were invisible and mull over the situation in disappointment. You too want to be able to analyze an artwork. You wish you could effortlessly talk about your opinions with everyone's eyes fixed upon you, basking in people's admiration. You feel increasingly disheartened however, as you believe that it would require years of study in order to increase your level of artistic criticism. In fact, it's not so difficult to increase your level of artistic criticism. Although it may be hard for an ordinary person to understand a painting from its technical aspect, We can still appreciate an artwork from its historical background, the artist's purpose, and the hidden intentions behind different ways of interpretation. As we unlock ways of seeing in this bookie, you'll be able to get a preliminary understanding of the hidden languages of visual arts, including oil painting, photography, and advertisements within 30 minutes. The author of Ways of Seeing was John Berger, an influential English art critic, novelist, and painter in the contemporary world. He had extraordinary achievements in various fields of art. He held many solo exhibitions, and also wrote multiple monographs on art and novels. In 1972, the BBC broadcast his documentary series with the same name as the book we are introducing. Moreover, in the same year, his novel G won the Booker Prize and the James Tate Black Memorial Prize. In the field of art criticism, Ways of seeing used to be an alternative to the mainstream practice. Traditional art critics usually focus on the technical aspects of artworks, such as lines, colors, and composition. This book however directs our attention to something else, for instance the artwork's historical background, the artist's purpose, and the hidden intentions behind different ways of interpretation. It tells us the secrets behind images and gives us a whole new perspective to appreciate artworks. Topics in this book include traditional ways of seeing the oil painting, the influence brought by photography to the ways of seeing, the depiction of women from male perspectives in classical oil paintings, and ways of seeing the art of advertising in the modern world. The arguments used in this book have influenced Western ways of seeing visual arts for several generations. In 2011, The Guardian listed ways of seeing among the 100 best non-fiction books of all time. Next, let's follow Berger's guide to learn the secret language of visual arts from the following three aspects. Part 1. Ways of seeing in the age of mechanical reproduction. Part 2. Ways of seeing in the age of the traditional oil painting. Part 3. Ways of seeing in the modern age of advertising art. Before camera was invented, oil painting was the mainstream visual language used in Europe for four centuries. However, as popular as the language of oil painting used to be in Europe, it has now become mysterious and puzzling. When we enter a museum and try to appreciate an artwork, we may find it difficult to understand, even when captions are provided beside it. So, is this strange sense of distance intrinsic to the artwork, or is it generated by humans? Berger argues that this distance is human-made. According to him, two powers have led to the mystification of artworks. Politics and Commerce To mystify artworks is to give a new explanation to certain facts. The new explanation makes the art piece, which was initially quite evident and straightforward, deviate from its original point and generates new meanings. For instance, the ruling class may distort the original meaning of a painting, in order to prevent viewers from paying attention to real-world social conflicts in which it represents. By doing so, they can solidify their political power. 
Another example can be speculators who hype a particular artwork in order to make it worth much more than it does to gain profits from it. There is a case presented in the book about the mystification of an oil painting by political interests. Frans Hals, a Dutch master of the portrait, was renowned around the world for his vivid depiction of the character's transient expressions and movements. His image was even printed on the 10 Dutch guilders banknote. However, he spent most of his life in poverty and debt. In the winter of 1664, the then over 80-year-old Frans Hals accepted a commission from the old men's alms house in the Dutch city of Harlem, to paint two group portraits for its regents and regentesses. This created a conflicting situation as the destitute old painter had to paint the administrators from whom he got a scarce money. So, what did he do in his portraits to represent their barely existent kindness and nobleness? What Hulse thought of and how he felt at the time was undoubtedly later revealed in the final works. Purposefully, the two masterpieces are both quite dark and gloomy, without the iconic vibrant colors of the works in his prime. The characters in both paintings look either grave or dumb. However, when an art historian later interprets the two portraits in his article, they will often intentionally avoid pointing out Hall's evident criticism of these figures. On the contrary, they continuously emphasize artistic techniques. They analyze that the painting's dark tone serves deliberately to form a visual contrast, and that the character's facial expressions are in-depth descriptions of their personalities. With interference from political ideology, the artwork now becomes mystified. As a result, people won't pay attention to the fact that charity and subsidies from the government are not enough to meet poor people's basic needs. Not to mention how they would consider poignant questions, such as whether or not the current social system is fair. Mystification of artworks is not only attributed to politics. With the invention of the camera, the reproduction of images can be realized almost instantly, which has brought forth the mystification of artworks for commercial purposes. As camera can copy images, many paintings are reproduced in this way, damaging the uniqueness of the original painting. But at the same time, the original work becomes more significant for what the art piece uniquely is. We often hear of artworks that were sold in auctions at astonishing prices, and believe that the prices truthfully reflect the artistic value of such pieces. However, Berger argues differently. He points out that the price of an original work is actually defined by the evaluation standard of the object's rarity. Nowadays, many people worship artworks of the past, just because of the irreproducibility and uniqueness of the original works. They do not bring attention to its artistic value, but their commercial value. For such art collectors, since the original work cannot be reproduced, its uniqueness must always be highlighted, in order to keep increasing its market value and to profit from it. As a result, the mystification of artworks intensifies. Take Leonardo da Vinci's famous painting Virgin of the Rocks in the National Gallery for example. In the museum's catalogue, The entry on that painting consists of 14 full pages, making it one of the longest entries in the catalog. And what are there in those pages? They do not record and analyze the meaning of the image, but rather who commissioned the painting, its likely date, who owned it, legal disputes, and so on. It encapsulates years of research by art experts whose aim was only to prove two points. The first point was that the painting owned by the National Gallery is in fact a genuine Leonardo. And the second point was that an almost identical painting in the Louvre is a replica. Either way, they serve to define the commercial value of the painting and have almost nothing to do with its meaning. You may believe that too many reproductions destroy the original work's sense of mystery and thus lowers its commercial value. But that's not often the case. In the following example, Even if an artwork has been constantly reproduced, the original still becomes even more mysterious as it's hyped by market value. The National Gallery often reproduces some of its collections and sells them as souvenirs. Among them, the most reproduced is Leonardo's cartoon of the Virgin and Child with St. Anne and St. John the Baptist. At first, only some scholars were interested in this unfinished drawing in charcoal and black and white chalk. Until one day, an American offered to buy it for two and a half million pounds. From then, it became world famous. Now, 
The drawing is protected behind bulletproof perspex, and has become mystified. From what we've just covered, we see how the invention of the camera has helped speculators mystify works of art. Next, let's look at what other impacts the camera has brought. First of all, it has brought about a new way of seeing, and thus untraditional views. Before the invention of the camera, European art was based on the convention of perspective. A painting following the convention of perspective centers everything on the spectator, as if everything in the visible world is arranged for the viewer. The camera however can see the world from different angles in different ways. Such a way of seeing eliminates the central position of the spectator. It allows spectators to see things that are different from their own experience. Moreover, after the invention of the camera, the meaning of a painting is no longer permanent and determined, but changes with its context. The same painting can be used to serve different purposes through camera reproductions. The book describes an experiment that properly explains this point. The experiment was realized with a famous oil painting Venus and Mars created by Sandro Botticelli, a master of the Florentine school. The painting represents a panorama of the life of Venus, the goddess of love and beauty, and Mars, the god of war. In the experiment, Venus's face is singled out in a reproduction, isolated from its original context, and becomes a brand new portrait. This new portrait created by isolated reproduction starts to have its new meaning beyond that of the original work. This is how technological innovation impacts our ways of seeing classical works of art. As mentioned previously, speculators gain massive profits from art dealing. However, such speculating makes art more mysterious and more incomprehensible for the general public, widening the gap between the two. An institution conducted two social studies concerning this subject. One study looks at the level of education of art museum visitors. The samples come from Greece, Poland, France, and the Netherlands. Let's take the French results as an example. Among French people with no educational qualification, only 0.15% have ever visited an art museum. Among those with only primary education, the percentage increases a little to 0.45%. The rate is much higher among the French with only secondary education, reaching 10%. So far, it seems like people's level of education has direct correlation with their interest in art. The higher one's educational level is, the more interested he or she is in art. If that's the case, then, is there a much higher percentage of people among those with higher education? Well, the answer is no. Results show that among the French with further and higher education, only 12.5% of them have visited art museums. The study shows that the majority of the public simply don't care much about works of art. So, what impressions do the general public have about art museums? Another survey asked people what they associate art museums with. Most people answered that art museums most likely remind them of churches. It shows that people feel that art museums or the mysterious objects displayed within them, to be quite distant from their secular lives. This concludes the first part. Let's do a brief summary. First, we talked about why artworks are mystified. One reason is politics, and the other is commerce. Then we talked about how the invention of camera brought along techniques of reproduction and changed the determined nature of a painting. It also has helped speculators mystify the art. However, the invention of camera has also brought along new ways of seeing images. Finally, we talked about how the over-mystification of artworks has widened the gap between the general public and art. Today we are just sharing limited bookie. To unlock more key insights of world-class bestseller, please download our app. Just search for B-O-O-K-E-Y at Apple Store or Google Play. You will get 7 days free trail with more features.